Welcome out to Robert J. Bishop Jr. Stadium here in Clyde, Ohio for the Division VI Region 22 Finals here on WOSN. Good evening, everybody. I'm Chris Malenga alongside Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, Columbus Grove and Columbia doing battle tonight here in a very cold, very windy stadium. Yes, there's no doubt that uh, those conditions are going to play big in the game tonight, especially with the styles of both teams. But, you know, here we are, you know, you're playing for a regional championship and a chance to go to the final four so there's not a player on that field that lets that get in the way absolutely columbus grove columbia have not met in the playoffs now we talked about columbus grove's resume a little bit last week uh for three straight years in the playoffs for the last five 16 total appearances state champs in 2003 four-time regional champs and uh 26 and 14 postseason record columbia just a little bit different um making its third straight appearance in the playoffs and 12th overall but this is their first ever regional final appearance yeah and you know sometimes i mean again it's easy to say this but i think you have to take that route sometimes and i think when you look at the number of years that they have now been in the playoffs you look at where they're at today you also can tell they've built a program they haven't built a one-time wonder. Yep. They've got a program. The expectations are high. They have a tremendous coaching staff, uh, as does Columbus Grove. But, again, I think that speaks volumes for why they're here tonight. The winner of this game will face the winner from Saturday's Region 24 championship game between Marion Local and Allen East. That'll be at Wapak, and we'll talk a little bit later about how we select some of these sites. But let's talk about Columbus Grove first. They're 11-2 and overall. They were 6-1 and in the Northwest Conference, and Andy Schaefer's in his 11th year. They've won eight straight after 3-2 and start to the season. They're the fifth seed, and they've beaten Black River, Northwestern, and then the game we covered last week, Colonel Crawford. And uh, scoring 28.5 points per game, we're allowing just 11.1. And uh, they, uh, they, you know, these two teams matching up on paper is going to be really interesting as far as the number of points that these two teams let up. And so it, it's going to be a different kind of football game. Well, it, it really is, and especially because both defenses are extremely strong. Columbus Grove comes in, aver they're the sixth best defense in Division Six, just allowing 9.8 points a game. And, you know, you win with defenses and, you know, again, weather conditions, you know, as much as they are going to play a role tonight, that defense becomes critical. Became very critical last week to get them here. Colonel Crawford uh, last week uh, played tough. They uh, they beat Colonel Crawford 14-7 in overtime. We talked about the two teams' defenses being good. It was a defensive battle all night. Uh, Crawford got on the board by blocking a Grove punt, and they scored a short touchdown. Grove got a, a score in the third quarter on Renner's 33-yard touchdown pass to Zach Reynolds. And then in overtime, Grove scored first on the touchdown, uh, a three-yard rushing touchdown, and then the Bulldog defense stopped the Eagles on fourth and 17 in overtime to seal that win. And the same thing happened uh, if you look at Columbia last week, you know, it's very, very interesting series where there was a, I think it was a third down, or second down, and I believe it was second down. Columbia, um, or their opponent, I'm sorry, um, Crestview. Crestview, you know, looked like they were short of a first down. They were given the first down, and uh, Coach Ward was screaming for a measurement. They didn't get it. And next play, they throw an interception. And a 99-yard And a 99-yard run that turned everything around. Absolutely. So let's talk about Columbia a little bit. They're 13-0 on the season. That's the most uh, they've ever scored in, in school history. Uh, Jason Ward's in his 17th year with a record of 125-60. and 60. They were 11-2 and two with the only regular season loss coming at Keystone. They lost to Springfield last year in the regional final. And they entered the playoffs as the third seed in Region 22. They won games against Ashland, Mableton, Hopewell, Loudon, and Crestview. They're scoring 38.7 points per game. We're allowing just 17.8. And uh, they, uh, they're, a good de they're a good team. And the, the person you're going to look at is <laughs> <laughs> number uh. three, and it's Marco uh, Cirigliano. He uh, has uh, broke the school rushing record for single game in week three. He uh, had a 99-yard interception last week uh, in that playoff game. He was first in league in the scoring, second in the league in rushing, and he was the Division Six Northeast District Offensive Player of the Year. Yes, over 2,400 yards rushing as a uh, last year as a sophomore. He's only a junior. Yep. Uh, 42 touchdowns last year. Uh, as you mentioned, a 100-yard pick six uh, last week. Yep. Um, uh, set the school rushing record with 409 yards and four TDs, and not in a blowout win. It was nope. a 42-41 overtime 40. win. That's right, right. Absolutely. So, you know, and he, is, he has done just everything for them. And a great player. 
Plus he has five interceptions on the defense. Yes, <laughs> so. and, you know, that's one of the things, too, and I think you expect that at this level, too, in Division Six. but you see a lot of these players going both ways. Yep. And I don't think that's a real advantage or disadvantage because both teams do it. Absolutely. Well, I was, I was following one of the Grove coaches outside uh, today, and I said it's going to be a lot of number three running the ball tonight, don't you think? Because number three, of course, for uh, Columbus Grove, uh, they're a really good player, uh, Trent Barraza, and then number three for uh, for for uh, Columbia is also very good, and so those two teams. Yeah, well, also, I know this is a little off cuff here, but we also talked about with the way the numbers are in the jerseys, we may have a hard time picking out. We It may be easier for us, put it that yeah. way. Uh, we can't see that number three on the jersey very well with the green number on black jerseys, but we think we're going to see what he does, and we'll be able to call it that way. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at our keys to the game uh, for uh, this game. First, let's take a look at the keys for uh, Columbus Grove. Okay, let's look at them. You know, first of all, they need a balanced attack on the offensive end. They're going to be forced to pass tonight. And, you know, because, again, Columbia's going to stack the box as much as they can. So they've got to be much more balanced, especially more than they were last week. Two, they've got to win the battle in the trenches. You know, they've got big right tackles in Ethan Johnson and Tad Cook. Uh, they've got to do a good job and win that line of scrimmage. Earlier in the year, uh, Coach Schaefer really challenged them to do a better job, and they've got to come up big tonight. Third key, okay, here we go. I put this as the third key for a reason. <laughs> okay. They need to stop number three, stop number three, stop number three. Now, I said that three times That's for right. a reason. Uh, <laughs> Sir Rigliano is just such a player for Columbia, and he, he does do everything. Lastly, I, I cannot overemphasize the importance of special teams. Um, flipping the field uh, was so evident in some of the both teams. Mm -hmm. And they've got to catch punts. Uh, they've got to field goals if they have the opportunity with the wind they need to connect so winning the special team battle is a big thing and by the way columbus grove had a punt blocked last week it was really almost the outcome of the game so that special team a punt you know they have to uh, they i'm sure they worked on it all week long and Jeb Halker for them is a really good punter. And so, you know, to, to not give him some protection so he can boot it away, that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's exactly right, too. I mean, again, that's why the kicking game is so important. They do have a very good punter and a good kicking game. So, again, as we sit here, we can see the wind blowing. We can pretty much tell what way it's going because the snow is so heavy right now. But, again, that is going to be a big key. All right, let's take a look at the keys of the game for Columbia for the Raiders. Well, you know, their big thing is they need to start fast. Uh, I, I, again, the similarities need to these two teams because both teams last week were locked in a battle of not really moving the ball at all early in the game. Columbia needs to do that, and the Coach Ward really feels that's a big thing. Two, they're good at this anyhow, but they really want to control the ball and control the time of position. Three, just like Columbus Grove, they want to win the kicking game, and I think that's a big key for them. And I think anybody at this level, at this round of games, they need to win the turnover battle. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be an interesting game. You know, the wind, as whipping as it is, it might be challenging to, you know, kick a, a kick field goals, kick extra points, uh, you know, throw the uh, throw the ball around. You know, right now it's 28 degrees. Winds are out of the northeast at 19 miles an hour as we start. It feels like 15 degrees, and, and it's snowing. Well, we should Pretty say, fun. no, it feels like 70 degrees <laughs> where we're sitting, and I'm feeling for the, the fans that are in the stands and the bands on the field right now. And our WSN camera people up top. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more here from Clyde. It is Columbus Grove and Columbia here on WOSN. Back out at Clyde High School, it's Columbus Grove and Columbia here. A beautiful night uh, if you're uh, in the press box. Not so beautiful night if you're outside as the snow is coming and it's blowing pretty good. Tonight's scoreboard being provided by Hulker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hulkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Our first downs tonight are going to be sponsored by Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. And our touchdown sponsor tonight is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap, iron, and scrap cars. So Northwest Ohio Recycling, Chris Malanga, Jerry Snodgrass. And let's meet these two teams. Uh, first, let's take a look at some of the players for Columbus Grove. 
Uh, their quarterback is Brenton Renner, a six foot, 165 pound senior. He's 93 of 170 passing. That's 54.7 percent. He's got 1,222 yards, seven touchdowns to eight interceptions. The running back who we're going to see a lot of tonight is number three Trenton Barraza, 6'1", 175 pound sophomore. He has 196 carries, 1,427 yards, which is a 7.3 average and 12 touchdowns. Uh, A.J. Schaefer played really, really well uh, last week against uh, Crawford. He is a six foot one, 225 pound senior. 12 receptions, 236 yards, two touchdowns on the year. He also has carried the ball 81 times, 424 yards, and 13 touchdowns. You know, they list him as a tight end, but he really is the second running back. Yeah, that's that's an, and, and really he's one of those guys that when you need your yards, they bring him back there and they're going to go to him. He just plows ahead. Your wideouts, Shep Hulker, a 5'9", 155-pound senior. He has 34 receptions for 526 yards, five touchdowns, also 10 carries on the ground, 82 yards. Zach Reynolds was a big uh, wide receiver for them last week. Uh, he's a 6'1", 175-pound junior, 28 receptions, 433 yards, two touchdowns. He also has had seven carries, 35 yards, one touchdown. Those are the big players. And then, at the, of course, that line we talked about last week as well, both lines. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, especially when I look at Columbus Grove's line, I, I, you know, I always make a big deal out of those. But, you know, you've got a big center in Mays, uh, right tackle out there at Johnson at 305. And, you know, they're going to really – and both of them are underclassmen, by the way. We really, really are going to rely on them a lot. Absolutely. And then our uh, let's take a look at Columbia's starting lineup. The, the person that's going to be leading that is Marco Cerigliano. 5'10", 180-pound junior, 327 carries, 24, 91 yards, 42 touchdowns this year, 21 receptions, 225 yards, two touchdowns, 57 tackles on the defense. Carter Calamaz is the... Um, Going to be the quarterback, 5'9", 155-pound senior, 82 of 137, passing 1,106 yards, 10 touchdowns and an interception. The running back, other running back is Tony Governor. He's 5'9", 175-pound senior, 87 carries, 595 yards and eight touchdowns. He also has 66 tackles on the defensive side. Jacob Sanders, 5'7", uh, 150-pound junior, 77 carries, uh, 586 yards, six touchdowns. He also has 19 receptions, 240 yards. And a touchdown, 53 tackles and five interceptions defensively. Vince Berardi, a 6'3", 180-pound senior, 34 receptions, 534 yards and four touchdowns. He also has four carries for six yards and a touchdown and 93 tackles, uh, 12 tackles for loss and three interceptions on the defensive side. And finally, linebacker Carter, uh, Carter Peabody is one to look at. Six foot, 185-pound senior, leads the team in tackles with uh, 62 tackles, seven of those uh, tackles for loss. He's second in tackles, excuse me, behind Berardi, but seven for loss. Well, you know, the other thing is, you know, the, the, out of that wing T or, the, you know, they will, they'll take, uh, uh, Kalamaz will take snaps under center. But what I really like about Columbia, Dupasky and uh, th their right guard, Chapman, those two guards pull and lead all the time, and they're good. And they're very solid, very, you can just tell, very fundamental in their blocking. So you're going to see them. We probably won't call their name a lot, but they're very good on that offensive line. You, that's a big key for Sirigliano. You might call them on the defensive line as Michael yeah, Chapman yeah. and Gavin Tollett are on those defensive tackles, and those guys are, uh, are good as well. So. Yes, that's exactly right. Well, we're about to get this one uh, kicked off here. We're going to take another timeout, come back with more after this on WOSN. Back on... WOSN, they started a game a little early and caught us off guard. <laughs> We're underway. Well, and I should remind our viewers, this game is not being held in Buffalo <laughs> as they look at the uh, weather conditions right now. It's really picked up since we were on pregame, and that opening kickoff was fumbled right away but picked up right away again by Columbus Grove. All right, so Columbus Grove will have it first and 10. This will be really interesting because it's hard to see both teams. It's dark out. That's a handoff. That'll be going to Barraza. He'll go up the sideline. He's got first down and more to the 50, into the 40, the other way, down the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, and he is down in the end zone looking for flags. Didn't see any. And the opening play of the ball game, and we see about a 91-yard touchdown, I think. That wow. is crazy. <laughs> Barraza just went right down that sideline, and wow. And well, Barraza turned the Jets on in that last 10 yards to 15 yards and looked like they were going to catch up with him and was able to turn it on. And you're right, just right around the right end. And well, he, they didn't need to worry about throwing the ball if uh, they can do that all the night. So 
Yards. 85 yards for Barraza to start things off here. Whoa, that is uh, six nothing. Let's see how this uh, this extra point goes. What do you think, Jerry? Is it go for two night? It almost is because even that snap was fumbled, and I think it's off. That nope, is good. good. He good. got it in, so that makes it seven to nothing. Columbus Grown takes an early seven nothing lead back after this on WOSN. Back on WOSN, we had our first touchdown presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling, and uh, that was an 85-yarder uh, here early on, and that was basically 22 seconds worth of game. 22 seconds in, play number one, and Columbus Grove takes a 7-0 lead. I'll tell you what, that was, uh, if you have Barraza on, on like that tonight, uh, you're in a good situation, especially with the going into the wind as Columbus Grove is doing. Now, it's going to be them kicking off again into the wind, and Shep Halker will have to, you know, he put it through the uh, through the uprights there, but I don't even see him as kicking. I think Zach Reynolds might be kicking off. No, nope, maybe Hulker's coming out. There he comes. Yep. I thought may maybe he was just talking to the coach. Well, too, you know, they're, they're going to have to hold, which they did on the opening yeah. one, too, but with uh, Columbia did, but um, they're going to have to hold every kickoff, you know, so it just... Jacob Sanders, number one, and Marco Cerigliano, number three, back there to receive. There's also another one back there. But again, these numbers tonight, Jerry, are going to be really, really hard when they're wearing black jerseys. Yard lines are tough to see yep. right now. It's picked up up to the right side. Now back up the middle, and it's stopped, and Cerigliano will get out to the 31-yard line where we're going to start first and 10. So basically, you know, kind of a combination of a, a wing tee, yeah. Single back kind of situation going on. Yeah. And they're fairly predictable when you look, but but at the same time, you know, on some of their formations, but at the same time, they're just fundamentally sound and they're okay with that. Calamaz will be your quarterback. He's a 5'9", 155-pound senior. And when I watched a little film on these guys, he lines up under center, but he has a weird kind of posture when he lines up under center. He almost bends down. And so... Columbus Grove in a 4-3 defense. And it's a sack. And a fumble. And a fumble. Who's it? Who has it? Well, Columbus Grove has it. Wow. That's not the way that Columbia wanted to start the game, obviously. You know, one of the things I was going to say is that Grove brings their linebackers yep. quite a bit. They got off the ball very quick and got a hold of the quarterback before he even uh, handed it off. I don't know if there was a fumble snap or what happened there on the on the but. Let's see. And they threw that down before it looked like he had even attempted to hand it off. I'm not sure if he even got the snap. All right, so we saw this against them last week, too. They had a couple issues Yes, they did. All right, so Grove has it first and 10. This will be a handoff, well, and that is going to be, oh, it's a fumble the other way. Grove gets it back, yep. and that's the other thing I was going to say as we look at the replay on this. You know, they, they found, you know, that you know the uh, pulling there by uh, Kyle Lathrop, and uh, Columbia just filled that gap instantly and again got a hold of Renner before he even handed it off. And A.J. Schaefer was the guy that fell forward there. So, again, it's going to be slippery. People are going to be falling quickly. So we'll see what they do here. Barraza will go into the wing here. And they've got Reynolds in the backfield. Renner will call for it. Another fumble. And another fumble. This is going to just be fumble, fumble, fumble. Well, let's see. They fumbled the kickoff, got it back. We've seen how many fumbles right now? Two. two. So we're three fumbles, and we're not even two minutes into this game. <laughs> and I talked about one of the keys is, you know, winning the turnover battle. So you can see why that's so important in this game. Absolutely. This will make it third and 14. You know, third and long, and, you know, this is a running. <laughs> normally that's a passing situation, but they're going into the wind and going to be very, very tough for Renner. And Barraza is off the field right now in this play. So let's see if the pass will be able to happen here. Renner with it. He will hand off. This is Schaefer. Schaefer goes to the corner. And he still hangs on and gets basically to the 30-yard line and no more. And that'll be a turnover. I don't think Columbus Grove is going to be kicking a field goal. Into no, this. <laughs> no. This, it's, it's a fourth down. and Might go for it here. Yep. So I don't know if they're going to go for it or, or punt it. I don't know if he can punt it. I don't think the 20. Well, not only that, but I don't think they can trust the snap and the, you know, the wind and everything. I, I think the wind would take it on the long snap. Absolutely. 
So, yeah, they're going to go. It's four down territory. Four down territory extends quite a bit in this game. Halker in the backfield with Renner. Renner will hand off. Barraza will go forward and get about five, and that's about it. So that'll be a turnover on downs back to Columbia. Yeah, and, you know, if you're the Raiders, this is something that, you know, oh, yes, you give up that touchdown on play number one, but be patient. Be patient. You're going to get turnovers. You know, be patient. And that's exactly what they've done. They held them now. Time to, time to you know, put it in gear on, on the offensive end. All right, it'll be first uh, and 10 for for uh, Columbia, and they're at trying to get the number here. They're at the 26, their own 26-yard line. All right, here we go. They've got two backs in the backfield. Their quarterback is Calamaz. Calamaz will look down, call out the signals. They'll put a man in motion. This will be a handoff. That's Sergio He will come forward and get nothing. And basically back to the original line of scrimmage. Uh, those linebackers for Columbus Grove, very, very solid. You know, uh, Tad Cook especially. You know, he, of course, him and Schaefer in that uh, lineback those linebacker positions do such a great job. Now they spread things out a little bit. Sigriliano is, is in the backfield with uh, the quarterback, Calamaz, who's under, who's under center. This is going to be a whole misdirection, and let's see what happens. The move forward, and I don't know what even was supposed to happen on that play. No, you know, I talk about those guards pulling. You see right there, as I mentioned that earlier, you know, with guards pulling like that, and that's DJ Dupansky that's pulling, but it, it, it just slows you down with the field conditions so much. Trader came in and... Uh, made the tackle there so it's third and so ten and this is just a mess right now for uh, both teams here in this crazy football uh, weather here with the snow on the field at Clyde third and ten Calamaz with it he will throw catch is made and that is to uh, Sergliano and that'll be about a pickup of seven about four yards short three yards short so they're going to punt it away. They have the wind here, so this should be a little bit better. But, again, the snap could be an issue. Absolutely it could. And, you know, we talk about field position being such an important aspect of things. And, you know, again, holding, if you're Columbus Grove, you held, you know, pretty deep into their own territory. Yep. And hopefully Seven. they can get – you know, get decent field position out of this, even though the wind favors right now Columbia. 7.30 and counting here. And – Let's see, their punter is uh, Frank Washburn, and we've got a timeout. No, false start. Marker, false start. So that'll back it up. Columbia will have it now fourth and nine. So that'll be a little bit more challenging. But, again, you know, it's got the win with the punt. If you can dig it, get it away, you're good. Right. And, you know, you have to remember both teams are dealing with these field conditions yep, exactly. and this weather. So. The, mon the uh, wind is definitely going from left to right here. So Columbus Grove is going into the wind right now. And let's see how this punt will go. Washburn stands back, has it. Kick is up. It gets a good run. Barraza will come down with it at the 32-yard line. He will go to the right side, out to the 40, 45. And he will get close to the 50-yard line, up to the 48-yard line, where it will be first and 10 Grove. You know, you can just tell the footing is so tough. And, and again, I'm over. I'm not trying to overemphasize that, but it really puts the defense in a spot that they they they're standing there and they just really can't make cuts when the offense has the ball. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see what uh, Grove does here. Grove in their white uniforms with the black numerals, black pants. And let's see, Barraza is in the backfield with Schaefer. They'll hand to Barraza. He will get through the middle of the line and then be stopped very short, pick up of about a yard. Boy, he just got he got dumped on that. I, I think it was Hayden Barrow there that just. Garrow was the kid that uh, tore his ACL and missed the whole 2021 20, season yes. and came back in week five. Yes, and I believe uh, he was an All-Stater. He was. So two-year All-Stater, I believe. So. Yep. Give that kid credit. Nice that he can come back for his senior year, play play uh, eight games or so. Yeah, and you know, watching him on tape, what a great form tackler he was. And we saw it there. Just boy, You just don't get out of his grasp. They've got uh, 
and wide out each side. And now they're going to pitch. This is Barraza again. He will get across the 50. And nice tackle. Was that number three? No, that was 44. Yep. Garrow, Garrow yep. again. Yep. He is good. <laughs> he is. He's just very solid. Has a good nose for the ball. They come out in a three, three down uh, lineman on the defensive end. I'll tell you what, if they, didn't, if they didn't stop him right there, that was going to be a trouble for Barraza. I mean, a big a big gain. Right now it's third and five. So let's see what the uh, Bulldogs can do here with third and five. Snap is back. They'll hand off to Schaefer. Schaefer will dive forward. Schaefer still on his feet. Ball is out. And I think that uh, Columbia yep. got it. Yep. That ball went straight up in the air. We're going to watch this on replay. And again, uh, I think, yep, it, <laughs> look who created that that fumble. There you go. <laughs> Hayden Barrow. Garrow. I mean, just yep. head right on the ball. That thing went straight up in the air. All right, so that'll be a fumble. This is the, about the fourth fumble of the game. <laughs> and it popped, as you said, straight up in the air. So first and 10 at the 44 for Columbia, their own 44. Yep, you see the two wing backs right here. Oh. Let's see what uh, they can do here. It's a handoff. Sergliano will drive forward, and he will get close to a first down. He gets nine. That's their bread and butter. Motion left, you know, pulling in the guard, straight handoff. In this slippery weather, your both teams are kind of run dependent. What does that do? I mean, you got wins, so you got to worry about running. But but when you're handing it straight off and going straight up the middle and no cuts, advantage offense. Okay, so that'll make it second and one. Again, a fumble, and it's picked up by Grove, and Grove will have it. Wow! Oh my goodness! And Grove was in the backfield right as the snap happened. Maze, it was Maze yeah, that tried yeah. to get it, and then it went the other way, and I can't see who picked it up. Yeah, Kyle Mays, and that's the second or third time that Grove has gotten into the quarterback almost untouched. Yep, and they did it a lot last week. Yes, they did. Crawford. So first and 10, Grove at the 39 of uh, Columbia. And now they've got like an eye formation look. <laughs> Think they want to run, Jerry? So handoff. Barraza will go to the 40, 30, 20, and he will slide inside the 20 down to the 17. Big run by Barraza. Wow, yes it was. You know, he, I mentioned last week, he hits the hole so fast, and even in these conditions, he does it well, and does a very good job of picking his opening here. That's a Dale's Concrete first down. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. All right, so first and 10. Ball is at the 17-yard line, 420 remaining here first quarter. And uh, Columbus Grove uh, in charge here right now, up 7 to nothing. Here's Barraza, who will just hold on to the football, and that was a wise play to just yeah, grab the football. Yeah, it was. You know, Barraza does have some size to him. He's 6'1", 175, only a sophomore. So he's lost about a uh, yard there, so I'll bring up second and 11. Well, actually, he's lost a little bit more than that. Maybe let's call it second and 12. Ball's at the 20. So let's see what Barraza can do here. And again, they kind of switch between Barraza and Schaefer. They've got both of those in the backfield. Two wideouts on the far side, one on the near side. This is Renner with a quarterback keeper, and he will get back to the spot he missed. And actually, he'll only pick up about a yard. It looked, he must have slid that far. <laughs> yeah, there was a great block that time by 52 Kyle Mays, but Columbia, the Raiders were able to seal that and close that, that gap off quickly. Third and 12, Renner is in the backfield. He's got Barraza with him, double receivers on the far side, one here on the near side. The near side receiver is Zach Reynolds, and the wind just started whipping around, and we've got an offside. No, they, yeah, they called an offside on it. Wow. I thought they were going to call a false start on that one. I thought they were going to call something because the snow whipped up so quick. <laughs> so third and 12 becomes third and seven. Yeah, very manageable. And again, you're down four here down in territory. four-down territory. You're going against the wind. 
All right, so it'll be in the 14, third and eight. They need to get down to the six to make it first and 10. You'll probably see in motion here and straight up the middle, I would think. Renner with uh, Braza in the backfield. Trying to get him to jump offside, yeah, they did. but unable to do so. So they'll change the play a little bit. Renner will call it. He's in the shotgun. Linebackers are coming, I think. And let's see if the Grove will have to take a timeout here. I think they are. So Grove will take a timeout with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining. Seven nothing. Columbus Grove back after this on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, Chris Malinga, Jerry Snodgrass with you. Columbus Grove has it, third and eight, and uh, they have it deep into Columbia territory after turnovers. There's been about five fumbles already tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's been a hard time keeping track of how many there have been, and again, that lasts uh, before that timeout, just trying to get Columbia to jump. Schaefer in the backfield with uh, Renner. Renner is going to go forward. Actually, that was Barraza in the Wildcat, Yep. and that should have the first down. No, that was Best. Remember, they did that yeah, last they week. Did. That was Brought, Landon Best, him. the yep. freshman quarterback. He's the backup, and he did this a little bit against yep. Crawford last week. All right, 2.36 remaining here. It'll be first and 10, actually first and goal from the six now. Grove already up 7 nothing, and I tell you what, points may be at a premium tonight. They might, and that's why, you know, if Grove scores here, it's, uh, I mean, we're way, way early in the game, but sure. again, with points, like you said, being at a premium, very, very critical to jump out. And, it, and you know, you can I go back to those keys where uh, Columbia wanted to start fast. All right, there's Barraza around the curve, and he gets in and will be tackled down to the one. So pick up a five on Barraza. Uh, nice job there in motion. You can really see the confidence, too, right now in the Grove line. So we'll make it second and goal from about the one-and-a-half yard line. And Grove uh, splitting two receivers out far side and one near side. So they are splitting the defense and hopefully drawing a couple defenders so they yeah. go up the middle. I don't think they're going to put the ball in the air here. They've got Renner back in and Barraza. This will be Barraza again. He'll dive forward and should be in the end zone. He's in. Touchdown. That makes it 13-7, and that is a Northwest Recycling touchdown. Touchdowns presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap, and iron, and scrap cars. And Columbus Grove taking advantage of the turnover. They sure are. You know, you can't overemphasize the the importance of the turnover battle right now. So that makes it 13 to nothing with the extra point coming in to kick it is Shep Hulker, the kicker for Columbus Grove. His first uh, kick was good. Well, the good news is the snow has stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it is down. Kick is up, and it is a penalty marker coming in. So let's see what they do. They didn't signal whether it was through or not. So that makes the kick was good. Probably a defensive penalty. He's talking to the defensive. But I never saw the signal that it was good. I mean, you and I think yeah, it's good, but yeah. we did not see a signal from the... Let's see what they're doing. They're going over and talking to the Grove sideline. I think he was covering the center or jumped. I think I think he leaped over. Leaped over. Yeah, uh -huh. not supposed to do that. So, so let's see. We we haven't put the point. We haven't put the personal foul. And the extra point's good. So there you go. <laughs> it was a penalty on Columbia, and they're going to actually be assessing that on the kickoff, it looks like. So that'll make it uh, 14 to nothing here, a minute 35 remaining. Let's take a uh, timeout here on WOSN. Back on WOSN, Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass here with, with you, and Columbus Grove is up 14 to nothing here in the first uh, quarter. 
and it was a big first play. Barraza went 85 yards for a touchdown to start things off, and then a turnover here. Uh, Crawford, or not, I said not Crawford, <laughs> Columbia uh, fumbled it, and uh, Grow got it back. So there's been about five fumbles back and forth. Each team has lost one. Well, even here, how important. Yeah, again, he's not going to try to kick that out of the end zone. He's trying to get good field position. Probably could have kicked it. And the ball's out again. I think it went out of bounds That might have gone out of bounds. What is yep. going on? Called it called it out, called it down first. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he didn't look like he, you know, he got hit. Wow. So it went out of bounds before Grove had possession. I think he so. called him down. Oh, okay. I think he pointed down. So I think that he was down before he fumbled. And okay. Knee, knee so was they've down. got it at the 31-yard line. This is the exact same yard marker they started last time, the 35, 31. And let's see if uh, – if uh, Columbia can get anything going here, remember they've got that big runner in Marco Cerigliano, and he has not carried very much tonight. They really haven't had much of a chance to use him. No, they haven't. Here's a handoff. Cerigliano will go forward, and he'll pick up about a yard. And that'll make it second and eight. So... Grove you, doing a good job. Yeah, you know, too, in scouting reports and, you know, in video that you watch, especially for players, their point of view, you know, you can talk all you want about a player, you know, how good he is, but until you're on that field and get a real feel for what he has, and I think right now Grove is pretty confident, you know, defending him. Calamaz will have it. They'll hand off again. Cerulliano again gets hit. And uh, he will get out to the 36-yard line, so a pick up of five. You know, the thing watching film on him is it takes a couple of guys to really bring him down. But in this kind of weather, slippery feet, one one hit is going to have him hidden to the turf. Well, Tad Cook stayed home on that. And, and, you know, again, good, good, solid tackler, good, solid defensive player. And stayed home in that linebacker spot and, and uh, all them, how important that is. That will make it third and five. Trips here on the near side, one on the far side, one back in the backfield for Calamas, who is under center. 18 seconds remaining here. Now a man goes in motion. They'll do a quick pass. Catch is made, and Grove was there, and that is catch was made by Vince Berardi, but uh, Grove did a nice job with three guys covering right there. And you're talking about a team that does not throw the ball, but maybe 10, 12 times a game. Antonio Gray for Grove was in on the tackle. And that'll bring up fourth and three. And that means is we're going to probably see a punt here as the first quarter ends. Columbus Grove leads Columbia 14 to nothing. Back after this on WOSN. Back out here at Clyde. Columbus Grove leads Columbia 14 to nothing here on WOSN. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass. Love that shot. Look at, I love the plane in the end zone, Jerry. Isn't that cool? Yeah, especially with uh, the snow and everything else like right now. It's like all in itself. It looks like it's airborne. Well, it looks like they may be going for this because they'll be punting into the wind. Yep. And they need it fourth and three here. So let's see what they do. They'll hand off. And they're not going to get they it. They got it. Grove just pushing him back. And that was a tough thing, too, because in that quarter break, that took Columbia now having to punt in the win, and they made the choice not to do it. All right, so this will uh, be a good uh, field position for Grove as they have it inside the 40. And they have done well the first couple of times. Well, the, the one time they had it, they had a good to punch it in. Well, sure, you don't. it's not too bad getting the ball back on the 37, 38-yard line and you know, we talked about field position being so important, and uh, again, that played right into Columbus Grove's hands. So Grove has it now. Renner, your quarterback, he has Schaefer off to the left side, and now they'll bring him back in. They'll have a conversation there. Barraza will be your other back. Schaefer lines up kind of in a tight end spot. Couple receivers each direction, and now we're going to get a delay of game called on Columbus Grove. Well, you hate to do that on first down. Yeah, you do, and, you know, especially when you've got such good field position, puts you in an awkward spot now, first and long. Well, first and long is better than third yeah, and long, correct. said. <laughs> so first and 15 for Grove. See if they change the play at all. Renner comes up and talks to his center. 
and comes back. They'll hand off to Barraza. Barraza will get through the hole and pick up. He basically got the penalty back. Yeah, he still picked up five ten. yards on that, and, you know, that's something that uh, Col uh, Columbia is bringing their linebackers up. You'll see them stunt a lot. They have in the past, and um, bringing those up, and, but offensive line by Columbus Grove is doing a good job. Absolutely. Let's see what Grove can do here at second and ten. Do you think they throw it all, or they're just going to keep it on the ground? Oh, I think they'll sneak one pass in here, especially if they get a, you know, you know, maybe maybe it's four down territory. So if they get a third and short, oh, and here it is, to... Renner throws it, catches made by Schaefer, and he'll lose it out of bounds. I don't just, think they're going to give him possession at all. Oh, they're going to say he wasn't caught. Okay, he must have been bobbling it. Wish the camera was on that side. I would love to see that. Yeah, here we go. It got uh, tipped. Yeah, it did, and it was fluttered there. And Yep, he just never had control. Yeah. So that'll make it third and ten. All right, 14 nothing Grove. All right, so third and ten. Pitch, Barraza finds the hole, gets up the middle, and he will not get the first down, but he picked up about five yards. Yeah, that was a good effort. And there. you know what? Barraza is running, running very hard. Uh, the snow doesn't seem to be affecting him too much. Or the slippery conditions don't. All right, he's got it fourth and six now. I'm guessing they're going to keep it going here. In deep in your opponent territory, you have the wind, so a punt may go through the, up, through the end zone. Right, giving the ball up here, if you don't get it, you know, yep. you're still putting – you know, pretty deep in their own territory as far as this night con is considered. Schaefer with uh, Renner in the backfield. They'll have two split out here on the right side. Now they'll go up and maybe change the play here. Again, got to watch that clock. It's down okay. to two. They get the snap. They'll give to Schaefer, and Schaefer's hitting the backfield. Yep. That was a nice play right there by Sirigliano. He came in and made a tackle, big-time tackle there. Actually, that was Berardi, number five. Again, these numbers, for those of you that are <laughs> see it on the screen, it's green numbers and black jerseys, which I, I almost feel like should be outlawed. Yes. <laughs> they don't think about the guys yeah. calling it on the media when they when they put those things. They look cool. But. Now, you know what? When I was an athletic director and I was ordering uniforms for our different teams, I'll never forget, this was a long time ago, my sales rep uh, told me, he said, no, don't get yellow on white he said you won't and, and that was just one example he right. told me what else said, oh yeah you're right Calamaz will hand off and this Sirigliano will go about half a yard and good play again the Grove defense is really playing well tonight well we're 14 minutes into this and one of the goals by Columbus Grove was to control number three and so far they've really kept him in check he just has not had no room hasn't had any room their other running back is number 30, Tony Governor, and uh, Hayden Garrow also runs the ball. So, again, you got to worry about too much focus on one player, but on the other side of things, he's the guy that's got 2,600 yards this year. Yeah, and many times, though, Governor, when they put him in the backfield, they'll throw to him quite a bit. This will be a handoff. It bobbled again, and there we've got the edge, and this could be trouble, and the tackle is made with the first down, and that was Cirigliano that gets the first down. Columbia will have it first and 10. And as good of a runner as Sirigliano is, look at the blocking here on the edge. 44 again. Look at that blocking out on the outside. So they'll be in the Grove territory. That's the first time that they've been in Grove territory. Yeah, you see this. There's a very good view. Kind of fumbles that, but look at the block on out on the outside. And let's see if that continues to be the case, just handing off in the snow field is snow covered. You can see it in, in the replays and things like that. There is definitely snow all over the place. Slippery biggest field. play so far, biggest play right now by Columbia. This will be a handoff up the middle. So Renato will get about two, maybe three. So that make it second and seven. And short yardage is up the middle has been tight to come with. His biggest run came on a sweep on the left side. Yeah, you really see the offensive line right now by Columbia in those last two or three plays. See a lot of confidence firing off the ball a little bit more and getting a little bit of a, a little bit better push uh, on that offensive line. So second and seven, and they've got double receivers here on the near side. They got a tight end, and then they back in the backfield, two backs in the backfield. 
and it'll be a handoff, and this will be just swarmed, and that'll be nothing. Well, Columbus Grove, too, really, really putting probably seven, eight in the box right now, making it very, trying to force uh, the Raiders to pass. That's Governal who made who had the carry, but A.J. Schaefer, the linebacker for Grove, came in and blew that one up. Makes it third and nine. And again, you're on this side of the field here, probably four down territory, especially down 14 zip. Yeah, you could really see on that last play, though, you could see Schaefer, you could see uh, uh, Mays, you could see them really, really crowd that line of scrimmage. Calamaz under center, has a back in the backfield, double receivers. He will hand off on the sideline. Furiolano will get buttoned up and not get the first down. And I'll tell you, you got to watch A.J. Schaefer on this. We'll see him coming. We'll see me. He's out of the picture a little bit here, but, boy, he just he just pushes people out of the way to make that tackle. He does. So that brings up fourth down and five. And let's see what they do here. They do bring out a wide receiver. They got Berard, Berardi out far. And now they bring him back in. He was heading out to the split end, and now he'll head back out. Basically fairly tight. And they've got two backs on either side of Cerigliano. This will be a fumble, and I think Columbia has it, but that'll do it. Fourth down again, another fumble. I'm going to try to see what happened there. Uh, oh, my goodness. Can't even see what happened there. No. Just falling on it. I don't know if that was the quarterback, Calamaz. Oh, my goodness. So 7.05 remaining second quarter. Grove will take over at their own 45-yard line. The last time they had, they had turned it over on downs. They're up 14 to nothing, and let's see what they can do here. So 45-yard line here. Grove will have wideouts on either side, two backs in the backfield, Barraza and Schaefer back there with him. Renner is the quarterback. Renner calls out the signals, has it. And forward is Barraza, and actually that wasn't Renner, that was Bestin again. They keep doing that to us. They switch Landon Bestin. And Bestin is a good runner. Best is a good runner in his own right, so they've used him quite a, bo uh, quite a bit through the year. That'll make it second and six. Here at Clyde, this winner of this one goes on to play the winner of Marion Local and... Allen East. That'll be Saturday at Wapak. Second and seven. Best has it in the backfield. He will keep it himself, get out to the 45 and cross the 45. He should have the first down and he does. Grove has another first down being sponsored by Dale's Concrete. Right Dale's again. Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. And as much as we talk about him being a good runner, credit the offensive line for that. Just opened up a wonderful hole off tackle. Able to give best, what, seven, eight yards, whatever it was. Yep, Tad Coke is just, just really good there on yes. the left, uh, tackle side. Kylan Mays is your center, and he's done pretty well tonight, too, as far as blocking some of those guys. That nose guard, anytime you go up against a 3-4, it's challenging as a center. He did a great job. And there is a sack. And Best will go down, and that's a loss of about two. I think there was a miscommunication there. What was supposed to happen with that play? Yeah, I think it was. He never had a chance to get anything handed off. I, I don't think he was going to be the runner on that. So that'll be second and 12 now at the 44-yard line. It is 529 in remaining here, first half. So Barraza behind him, behind Renner, quick pass, catch is made, and that'll, still on his feet, and breaking another tackle and getting real close to the first down. He's down short about a yard, and a yard and a half maybe. And who was that too? I didn't get that and number. That I don't is, know if that was Shep Halker? Yeah. That, get, <laughs> that it was Halker. <laughs> Look, look at how that pass is going out there. But, boy, give this all credit to Hawker on this. Look at him just spin, just kept getting, you know, yardage. And now they're very, very much in keeping the drive alive, third and about two. Yeah, third and two. 441 remaining here. So third down. Renner will go up and talk to the center there, see if Barraza is going to be the recipient. Barraza has it. He will drive forward. 
and not very much. He'll actually lose a yard. And I don't know who came in there for uh, for Columbia. It looked like 55 maybe. Yep. It's Fatica. Fatica. I saw him. <laughs> I should have mentioned this earlier, but I saw him on film just destroy a runner almost in this same fashion, you know, where he's just so strong. Fourth and three, Columbus Grove has it. The Hawker drywall ha scoreboard says 14 to nothing here. Grove, if Grove doesn't get it, you know, Columbia will be right here. This is best. He has it. He's got a tackle. He breaks a tackle, and he's to the house and tackled at the last second. Landed best all the way down the sideline. That was great. Wow. Oh, look at this. Look at the blocking on that. It just opens up a hole. He doesn't get touched. He's down to about the two, three yard line. So that'll be a Dale's concrete first down. And it's first and goal at yeah, the four-yard line. Marking at the four, but he was untouched in that entire run. And he's not that big of a no. kid. He's 5'10", but he's a buck 40. Yeah. Right? So Best uh, is uh, Renner's in it again. They'll give to, they'll give to uh, Schaefer, and Schaefer can't get forward. So he will actually lose a yard back to the five. Boy. Boy, when, when it's amazing that, you know, the Raiders, when they have a chance and they get to some, they just have a push that's unbelievable. And it seems like right now that off left tackle, off, you know, uh, around the left end is working quite a bit. Of course, then again, Barraza made that 90 some or that 88 yard run, whatever it was, on that first play down the, out the right side. So I think around end right now, they're doing pretty well. All right, first there, second and goal from the five. Renner will hand off. Here's Barraza, and Barraza will be gang tackled and not get any further. Just back to the line of scrimmage, really. That makes it third and ten. Why the defense right now? Yeah, the defense for the Raiders really, really tightening up. And by the way, I think Fatica was in on that tackle. I failed to mention, you know, that that uh, senior is 6'6", 295. He's a big dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a big dude. And he, he was in on that one again, second. Now they backed it up to the six yard line. So they've just been going backwards. Reynolds is in at wide receiver. They're gonna throw to the, oh, it's pushed out of bounds. That was A.J. Schaefer that intended for him. And so that'll be a turnover on downs. Well, no, it'll be fourth no, and fourth goal, down. excuse me. You know, one of the most difficult things, I think, at trying to pass the ball, and I watched this earlier when Best was trying to make a throw, but can't grip the ball. Yep. He almost shot put it the last one that he threw. They're going to try for a field goal with the wind here. They have Shep Halker's your kicker, and yeah. it'll be a 23-yarder. Well, we talked to... Uh, last week a lot about his kicking ability and the kicking ability of Columbus Grove and how they've built kickers in their program and you can't overemphasize the importance of that. It's yeah. a bad snap and we've got a penalty marker come in. We're going to see what we what, see what the penalty is. Yeah. It's going to be a false, false start. start. So make it 20, that'll make it 28 yarder. Do you go any, do you go now on fourth down? No, you know, it, it, they're with the wind right now so I, but if Columbia is able to stop them on this, you know, we got two minutes before halftime, minute 55, but if they're able to stop this, you know, that's a, that's a mental win right now Absolutely. going into halftime. Absolutely. The snap was uh, really, really weird, too. It came yeah. like out like a basically like a softball pitch. So they're going to try this again. Landon Schrader is your, uh, your holder. Lathrop is your long snapper. Hawker will put it, kick is up, and it is good. So the Hawker drywall scoreboard now shows Columbus Grove 17 to nothing over Columbia. We're going to be back after this on WOSN. Back here on WOSN, the Hawker Drywall scoreboard shows Columbus Grove 17, Columbia nothing. Tonight's score will be provided by Hawker Drywall and plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And uh, I tell you what, Columbia has to be pleased only holding Columbus Grove to three there. They do, but, you know, being down 17 right now, they're not a team that, you know, it's hard, the style of play and the conditions, you know, to come back from a 17-point deficit. 
Ball falls off the tee, so they'll bring in, they'll call in uh, number five, Zane Stecksholdy, to hold it. <laughs> what do you do here? Do you put it up in the air and try to get a touchback? Do you risk, you know, Sigriano returning that? What do you do? Do you kick it low again? I think you kick it low. I mean, I think you take the chance of a fumble here. We'll see. Hawker put a And I was it. wrong. He kicks it high, and it's going to go into the end zone. Yeah. So the safe so thing Rigliano to do. went after it, but it yep. couldn't get it. So Sa Safest thing to do. So let's talk a little bit as these teams are coming out about, we're here at Clyde. How are these sites selected? You know, it, it, it's not rocket science. Now, you know, it's pretty easy with today's apps on phones. All you have to do is map. You can hit the map between Columbus Grove and Columbia Station, where the, where the school is, and find some place in between them. I mean, uh, when I worked doing this, administrating sports, I did not administrate football. But soccer was very, very tough to do because you had very little turnaround. But created TBAs, have good relationships with athletic directors, find sites, and beg them to host. Calamas has it under center. He throws quickly, catches made, and I think that was uh, Berardi that had that one, and that'll be a quick little pickup of three. Lathrop in on the tackle. And you know, how, you know is, is it hard to get schools to host these? Very hard. I, I, I think people forget, like, okay, I ate before I came here tonight, so I'm, I'm not going to comment about the food that was here, but athletic directors have to come up with that. And you can say, well, sponsors, but, you know, how much do you want to beg for that? So it's, very, you know, sponsors. I mean, you use them all year long, and it's a tough thing. We can talk about that more. Man in motion. This will be a handoff. And tackle is being made. This is Cerigliano who moved it forward. And he is close to a first down. They're going to give it to him. So Columbia has a Dale's concrete first down, and they're moving the ball. But the clock is going to be their enemy right now as it goes under a minute to play. Columbia has all three of their timeouts, though. Yes, and I wouldn't be surprised to see they're, they're not, not utilizing real well right now. But... You know, they're not they're not going to down it, that's for sure. Calamaz has a man in motion, hands off. This is Ceriliano. He'll try to get the outside, and he has some running room, and he's tackled at the 40-yard uh, line, pushed out of bounds, real close to a first down, and another 10-yard gain. So back-to-back 10-yard -back runs by Marco Ceriliano. Yeah, we're, we're seeing Marco Ceriliano, and, you know, given the weather conditions, seeing what a good runner he is. So... Sergliano comes out, I believe. They've got Jacob Sanders in as wide receiver. Not, I don't think that Columbia's thrown the ball tonight. I think they've tried once. So Just now, under center is Calamaz. Now they'll move, shift a guy to Carter Peabody. Will move to the right side. Man goes in motion. That's Garrow. They'll hand off. Sergliano will pick up. About a yard. I thought he came out, but he must have snuck back in on me. They have not taken a timeout. Yeah, that now they do. Now Columbia takes their first timeout, and let's continue that conversation yeah. about uh, schools hosting. Well, you know, you have to remember that when we walked in tonight, there were ticket uh, takers or you know now scanners, but uh, security. Um, you know, would you want to be out here tonight? I mean, you know, an Ohio State game on television today. I mean. And managing all the media. I mean, I think there's four or five radio stations here, a couple TV stations just trying to get everybody in the same Co area. Correct. And, you know, um, Greenslade, uh, I get Ryan and Adam mixed up all the time, but Ryan Greenslade is the athletic director here that does such a great job. Matt Fullwelling, um, they're great, great host. And when you look at what they're doing, there's no. they're doing this for two communities. Yep. They're doing this to... I say show off. They're, they're not showing off their facilities. They are a little bit. They're showing off the community pride yep. and the hospitality. We need more of that. Absolutely. So 31 seconds to go. Columbus Grove has a 17 to nothing lead. Columbia is on their own 42 yard line and got a minute or basically 31 seconds to go here. And Sigliano has been the person to get the ball the last couple of times. And now it's going to be fumble. Ah, that's a fumble. 
Wow. No way was his arm going forward. Not, I'm no way. Absolutely not. We're going to see this. He, he wanted to. Yeah. Oh, they called intentional grounding? Oh, I don't know. So they're going to call that intentional grounding loss a down. Yeah, right? It was forward. There we go. Yeah. He did throw it forward. Okay. He did throw it forward. He's right. All right. So this put it all the way back. This makes it second and 17. But they did call intentional grounding on it. So, Which makes sense. Yep. All these forward passes, laterals, all this situation here in the playoffs has been interesting. Now it's interesting because now Columbus Grove take a timeout yeah. right now. No, uh, sure no gain there for Serigliano, and Grove's going to call the timeout. So that'll be, make it fourth down. They have another timeout left, so if they – you know, they don't get it here on fourth down. Grove will have a couple seconds to throw it. They have the wind. So do you take a shot to the end zone if you get the ball back? Well, you sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not taking these timeouts, you know. And right now, if Columbia decides to punt, you're going to go after it. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you're going after it. What do you have to lose right now? I mean, in terms of, what, 15 yards? I mean, you already got fourth and, you know, 18, 20. And you, the punt is going to be into the wind. Right. So, you know, that, that kind of situation is going to be really, really interesting here. Yeah. Hawker Drywall scoreboard shows 17 to nothing in favor of Grove. Grove is the five seed, Columbia the three seed. And it looks like they are, are they going to kick it? It yep, looks like yeah. they are going to punt it. So, Grove, you know, you would come after this. I would think Grove is going to go after it big. Back is Hawker to, or not Hawker, a Barraza, rather. And let's see how quickly they come through here. And I'll tell you what, punter for them uh, is, uh, you know, the punter is Washburn. And really want to make sure that, ooh, high snap. Yeah, he had to get it off quick. And he got it off quick, it'll go out of bounds. Well, maybe it doesn't go down. It does, at the 42-yard line. That roll got him another two, three, four yeah. seconds. And Absolutely. So 11 seconds on the clock now. Columbus Grove has it at their own 42. They got the wind. I think you should tuck it. 20 more seconds, and, you know, that would give Grove a lot of time. The only situation, though, is if you throw an interception, you got a guy playing, uh, you know, playing safety. <laughs> Where's number three? Who had a 99-yard yeah. one last week. So let's see what they do here. They split out four wideouts, basically. Got Barraza in the backfield with Renner. Actually, that had Schaefer. Schaefer's wide open if they find him. Across the middle, catch is made. Barraza. Timeout now. And they do quickly call a timeout. That, yeah. was, that, that was Zach Reynolds. Yeah, that was a tremendous collision there, too. Five seconds. Grove will line up quickly. There's going to be an injury timeout. Is, did they did Grove call the timeout? They did, okay. yes. But that was a tremendous. Is that that's Sirigliano, I think that went they down. They still they still listed no, as no, nope. It's they still listed as a timeout on the scoreboard. So yeah. Vince Berardi that went out. Okay, Berardi was the injured player. Five seconds to go. Let's see what Grove. I want to see him throw it up. He had Zach Reynolds streaking down the sideline last week. And Grove did take their final timeout there. Okay, so. When uh, or when uh, Berardi came off the field, right. they would have started the clock. So, two second or five seconds here in the second quarter. If Grove can put up another touchdown, this would be this would be really really interesting going into halftime. The other part of that is Berardi, I believe, has to be out this play. I'm sure he is, and uh, Grove knows that and may go to his side again. Berardi is the linebacker. 93 tackles, and what his job to do here on this Columbia defense is to set the edge with Gavin Tollett. That's his his role, and they've done a pretty decent yes, job. Yes, they have. Other than the 85 yards yeah. by Barraza. So let's see what they've got here. You know, time for one play. Shep Hawker's out. Zach Reynolds, Steck Scholey's out. And then I think Riley Stouter is also out there, number 12. Empty backfield. Let's see what they do here. 
They got Barraza out as well, and now Columbus or uh, Columbia is going to call a timeout. Yeah, they wanted to see, especially when they see that empty backfield. So that's probably why a little gamesmanship there, <laughs> right? Yep. Let's so. take a quick timeout here on WOSN. Back on WOSN, 17 nothing. Columbus Grove with the lead. They have it with five seconds to go. At halftime, we're going to take a look at some games from around the region on the WOSN website. WOSN.tv has scores. They got a really nice scoreboard up there if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it. Five seconds to go. Now they've got it back in the backfield. Schaefer looking to throw down the field. Down the field, catch is made, and does he have enough time? Yep, dropped it. Dropped it. That's the end of the game, or the end of the quarter here, end of the half. Make it 17 to nothing on the Halker Drywall scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard provided by Halker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at halterdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Back after this on WOSN. Back out here at halftime, Columbus Grove leaves Columbia. The Bulldogs over the Raiders 17 to nothing on the Halker Drywall scoreboard. Chris Malinga, Jerry Snodgrass with you at halftime. Uh, they're playing Christmas music here, and they definitely have a winter wonderland out there. I went down to take a restroom break, and there's snow in the stands. How appropriate, you know, and also, you know, we've, some, we've seen some pictures from other sites around, especially in northwest Ohio, and there's several fields that are just covered. Grove is uh, leading here 17 to nothing, and uh, the winner of this one will face the winner from tonight's Region 24 championship game between Marion Local and Allen East. Marion Local uh, all over in that one. It was 34 to nothing last time I checked. So there you go. It looks like Marion Local might be the uh, the intended uh, recipient here of of this game, whoever gets this game. And is that a surprise? <laughs> no, <absolutely laughs> no in, in all fairness, you know, because I think uh, Allen East has been to the regional final now, I think two straight years, maybe more, but so a lot of credit to them. But uh, at the same time, you know, you're going to run into those Mac juggernauts and it's just so, so challenging. And, you know, I, I have to say this, you know, a lot has uh, been said recently statewide about uh, Chico resigning or, you know, retiring from, uh, um, St. Ignatius and, uh, you know, the career he's had. And, you know, I see a lot of stuff about the best coach in the state of Ohio. I think that's debatable for anybody. But, boy, I'll tell you what, you have to talk about Tim Goodwin in that conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, he leads the all coaches in Ohio with a number of state championships and, you know, a lot less to deal with, you know, when I say numbers and right. things like that. Sure. But what a, um, again, football's so good in Northwest Ohio. So, um, again, the small school atmosphere yep. of it, it really adds a lot. Certainly Division Six versus Division One, there is a little bit different. Yeah, there <laughs> certainly is. So what, do you, what are your thoughts here at halftime? Well, you know, again, we knew that weather would play such a role. I, I didn't know it would create the fumbles like it has created. I mean, you know, it's one thing for a slippery ball, but it just seemed like that wasn't the case. It just cold hands, I yeah. guess. I mean, I, it must have been what it was, but it, that and field position has really been the whole change. I, I I was stunned a little bit. I'm not taking anything away from Columbus Grove, but I was stunned about the, you know, long run on the opening play of the game. But that, yeah, that really kind of set the tone for things. And, again, for Columbus Grove, they've kept uh, – uh, 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 um, or Carigliano, they've kept him in check, and that was one of their big goals. Yeah. They've won the kicking game. So, you know, they're meeting their goals, and I don't know what else you would say at halftime about them. Absolutely. If you're, uh, if you're Columbia, what are you chatting about now? In yeah, the you know, one possession at a time, I guess, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing, you know. Uh, let, let's get a touchdown. Let's get a touchdown, and uh, I think then – you know, they're not out of it. There's no way they're out of it. Nope. But uh, at the same time, they have to take one possession at a time and build their way back. I, I think they saw some things that are going to work, especially the last series of, of, of the quarter. I think they saw some things around end that might work. And uh, I think they're going to come out and have to throw the ball a little bit. All right. Well, the, you had asked about the the slipper, the slipperness and the fumbles. The snow is very, very, very thin. Yeah. So it's, like, very light. And so it's, it's very... Slippery, you know, and you get it on that field turf. I don't know. It, it just could be. We saw guys sliding and slipping, and you know, just challenging. I, and I think that's been really, really tough on the defense. You know, they're they're not able to really make lateral movements very well. I and mean, you see them; they look flat-footed. Yep. Uh, they're not, but it's just uh, that slipperiness of the field is just doing that. 
All right, we are at halftime here at, on WSN, 17 to nothing, Columbus Grove over Columbia. We'll be back with more after this right here on WSN. Back out here on WOSN, Chris Malenga and Jerry Snodgrass, 17 nothing. Grove leads Columbia here at the half. Tonight's score we're being provided by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Our first downs tonight being sponsored by Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. And our touchdowns tonight being presented by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. And we've had two uh, Northwest Ohio recycling touchdowns and a field goal tonight uh, already, and it's b basically been all Grove. Yes, it has been, and, you know, again, field position being such a big thing, but, you know, I think Grove has been able to capitalize on that the best. When we get some downtime, I want to ask you, we talked about the site selection for this. How do they, the, you know, the sites for next week are already selected no matter who's playing, and so what, what thought goes into that? Well, you, you know, going into this weekend, you know, you've got, possibilities of who's going to win i mean you're, you're like this right one of these two teams is going to win they match up against is it uh, uh Very local uh, or the, right or that one. so you just look at the four possibilities you have and the other part about that is it's geographically located otherwise next week in division one you if you didn't do that you potentially would have uh, um, uh lakewood st ed's mm -hmm. playing molar Yep. Now, both of those like to travel, so that's not a big deal. Right, right. But you try to, you know, match them up geographically the best you can. And you know what? It's interesting. Over time, travel is so much better for people and the world's smaller. Yep. I think people, you know, now don't mind that travel. Kick is kicked and it fumbled at the one-yard line and picked up quickly. And this is going to be trouble right and here. And you talk about field position, and that is the second time that that punt has been fumbled or that, excuse me, that kickoff has been fumbled. And and I was going to say that uh, Columbia getting the second half kickoff, you know, it's a big thing, but now they've buried themselves on the one or two yard line. And I feel like if you get away from that ball, it may have gone into the end zone. Yes, it would have. So, again, he was kicking with a win. So, so that'll make it. I don't make it first and ten from the three, and not the good way. So they have 97 yards to go. Yes. So let's see what they can pull out of their hat here. Well. We also saw what Columbus Grove could do on the first play, too, yep. from, you know, 85 away. Absolutely. Marco Cerigliano is no slouch. 2,491 yards rushing coming to this game. I think you're going to see their offensive line come out big time. You know, Chapman, Vogel, or Vogue, excuse me, Vogue, Peabody, du, uh, du, Duposky, and, and Fatica. I think you're really going to see them. And I think there was a and fumble. That's be a safety. Is that what they signaled? Oh my goodness, they didn't signal that. They're gonna put that at the half yard line. Let's see. Wow. Oh, I don't know about that. Wow. I don't know about that at all. I mean, we've got a view here at a different angle, but they yeah. are literally, a, I, I think that's a tough placement. You're putting it on the one inch line and <laughs> that's, Pretty good eyesight if you can do that. Absolutely. Well, it makes it second and 12 now. Ball is at the one, and it is right against the goal line. From Let's here, see what it, does. From here, the tip of the ball looks like it's in the end zone. Let's see. Do they have it that time? They call, call it this time. Safety. Okay. <laughs> Took an extra play to do that, but. Yeah, look at those linebackers. All those linebackers are crowding the line of scrimmage, yep. and they're getting right in there, and you know they're coming. Yep. So that'll make it seven or nineteen nothing here. Wow! And then they're going to get the ball because yes, they have to go from the twenty yard line and basically punt it. And they're going to get the ball with uh, Columbia kicking into the wind. Absolutely. So nineteen to nothing now, eleven sixteen, and you couldn't ask for a better defensive stand right there from Grove. Well, and you, you look two things. You know, number one, you look at the Columbus Grove side and say everything has gone well for them. They really has, and a lot of breaks, a lot of weather issues, the wind, a lot of field uh, position. You look at Columbia, everything has gone wrong for them, and now the snow's picking up again. All right, so Columbia will have to kick from the twenty into the wind. And Columbus Grove should get good field position here, especially if it goes up into the wind. 
I'll tell you what, it is uh, really blowing and drifting again out there. Yeah, Look we at get that a snow right there. Good, good view of it. <laughs> oh, and, and by the way, he's kicking into that right now. Or go, or going to be. I'm just looking at like the officials. Their shirts and their pants are just blowing yes. like crazy. It is not got. It's got to not be fun out there tonight. But I tell you what, when you got a chance to, when you got a chance to uh, get into the regional final here or get into the you know final four here. Yes, players don't. Players don't feel it. Yep. And. But you know what? There are actually fans at this game. There are. <laughs> so Not many, but no, there's fans No, no, but um, <laughs> kudos to those people that came out. I'm looking at the Columbus Grove side, and uh, Carhartt ought to be doing a advertisement <laughs> for them. Over there. Yes. Absolutely. So they've got two people back. Chef Hawker and Trent Barraza are back. They're standing at their own 35-yard line. Yeah, back is uh, uh, a different term here. Good kickoff. And it just kills it. And Barraza will pick it up at the 35 to the 40, 45, 50. Down to the 40. And he is inside the 40-yard line to the 38-yard line. You know, I mentioned Barraza earlier. He's 6'1", 175, and only a sophomore. But he is a lot stronger than I really realized at the, uh, going into last week. And there was a great block right there by number 13, Antonio Gray, that really set that one up. It was interesting on that kickoff. You know, that ball was going really well, and it just all of a sudden just <laughs> hit that. Yes, and the snow has picked up really hard again. First and 10, ball at the 40. Renner has it. He will hand off Barraza, and he will get the first down across the 30-yard line, and Grove just moving the ball at will yeah. right now. You know, I thought earlier in the year they were counting on uh, relying a lot on uh, A.J. Schaefer, you know, carrying the ball, getting the big yards, and really, really needed Barraza to come on, and Barraza really has come on. And, you know, you talk about playing 12, 13 extra, or a few extra games during the season. That sure doesn't hurt for an underclassman. Really not. Dale's first down, another Dale's concrete first down here, first and 10, and it's fumbled, and Renner just falls on it, which is very wise to do at that point. Yeah, that was a very good job by Renner of that time. Again, I think there was a mix-up there. Barraza, I don't think, knew he was going to get the handoff. All right, so that makes it second and 12. Ball's at the 32-yard line of Columbia. Grove already leads 19 to nothing here with 10-27 remaining here in the third quarter. Well, I know Coach Schaefer and the staff right now, are, they, they want this touchdown because I think that gives them an extremely comfortable lead going the rest of the way. All right, Renner will get the ball. He will hand off. This is Shep Hulker. Hulker will go, breaks the tackle, and get close down to a first down. He's going to be about a yard and a half short. And I think that's the first time we've seen Hulker carry the ball, bringing him in motion across from his uh, back position, wing back position. Wow, they uh, stopped him a lot shorter than I thought. I thought he was a lot closer to the sticks, but it's going to be third and three. You know, third and three, but two downs to get, two downs to get those three yep. yards. And that time they had Hawker come from the right side and sweep across the line. He will now line up in the left side in the slot. They've got uh, Steck Schulte over there too. And this will be a handoff. Barraza will get the first down. Boy, he's done a great job of powering his way through. Last week we saw Schaefer come into the backfield a lot and do that. And I've seen Barraza really, really power his way through some things. That's another Dales concrete first down. It'll be first and 10. Ball at the 23-yard line here from Clyde. And Grove would love to put a touchdown on the board right now. Two wideouts on the near side here. One on the far side is Zach Reynolds. Back in the backfield is Barraza. You know, the other thing, too, they're eating up I the snap. clock. That's actually well. Schaefer, excuse me, Schaefer. And you're right, they're eating up the clock. That was a big blow up there by a number 44, Hayden Garrow. Seven tackles for loss on the season. Yes, and, and uh, what, a, what a solid player. I mentioned him earlier, but what a great job he does. And, you know, right now, if you're Columbus Grove, the clock is also your friend. You don't sure mind is. chewing this off. No, not at all. Second and nine, 841 remaining here. And now they've got Landon Best in at quarterback. Well, we saw him running the ball so well earlier when he came in. Best has it. Best will keep it. We'll go around to the left side, and Best will pick up about three yards and make it third and five. Best is a shifty little runner at yes, 5'10", 140. Is. 
So third and six will make it. And the line to gain is the nine. So that would be first and goal if, Colum if uh, Columbus Grove can get it. Again, four down territory here. Yeah, I don't. I, maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, with a 19-point lead, I think they'll use both downs here if they need to and try to punch it in. They do have the win, though. They could, could kick another field goal if they wanted to. Man goes in motion. This will be a handoff. This is Barraza, and Barraza will drive forward. That's actually not. That was Shep Hulker again. He's fooled me. And he's about a half yard line. short, I think. That's a good job that time, you know, bringing him across, double team down, kick out on the end. Let's see. It, it looks like it's right down at the I, nine. Let's see. They're just going to give him the first down. They're bringing the chains out. Yeah, it's hard to tell. He's motioning. It looks like he's motioning for a first down. He is. I think. That's what they're, right? That's what he's doing. Okay, so it's first and goal. It's at the nine. He needed the nine. It's at the nine. So, And, and I think, you know, Columbia is really questioning that because the yard marker, or the down marker was about a yard short. He was marking it there. I think uh, Columbia, Coach Hale wanted a, a measurement there. All right, so this makes it uh, first and goal. Best continues in at quarterback. He will hand off. Barraza goes nowhere. That's the first neg real negative yes. play on Barraza this, this game. Well, I think they snuffed that out really well with him in the, being the lone back. And, and the kid that runs it in at quarterback. Yes. <laughs> what we haven't seen that much tonight or this tonight is Brenton Renner running. He did a no, little bit against No, he did. He most certainly did. Crawford. You're right. I think any time they've wanted the quarterback to do any of the ball keeping and running, they've brought Best in. They have. So I think Renner's back in now, I believe. Second yep. and goal. Yep. Yep, Renner's in. A.J. Schaefer in uh, at kind of at the other back position. Barraza at the back. And they'll hand off. No, this will be a quick throw, and it is incomplete. It went off the hands. I think that was Zach Reynolds. That's something they ran last week and ran very effectively. You know, the fake, especially with two backs in the backfield. You think that Schaefer's going to lead block for that, give the ball to Barraza, and they faked it to Barraza, and then, or they faked it and then threw it out to the left. Was it to uh, Hawker, I think, was the intended receiver on that? So this is third and goal now from the 10. So let's see what they do here. Now a pitch. This is Barraza. He'll try to get the outside, and they don't get him outside that time. They and may kick it now. I think they are. He may pick up a to. yard. Well, so another three makes it 21 nothing, or 22 nothing. excuse me. So you'd be ahead even if they came back with three touchdowns. Right, three scores. And so let's see what they do. And they're very confident in their kickers anyhow. Yeah. They've got Schrader, the holder, out, but he's, yep, yeah, it looks like they are going to do yeah. it. Hey, you got the wind with you? Yep, absolutely. And you know they, may have not, to, they may call a timeout here. Yeah, and you know you're not going to have it in the fourth quarter, so. Kick is up, and it is Line good. drive, yep. It just barely got through the <laughs> through the thing there. So that is a, uh, a score, putting it on the Hulker Drywall scoreboard, 22 to nothing. Grove leads Columbia back after this on WOSN. Well, the field goal made it 22 to nothing. Grove as Shep Hulker puts it through the uprights. And uh, kind of just over the crossbar, really. And that means Grove leads Columbia 22 to nothing. And that was set up by a, a, a kickoff that wasn't fielded well and then a safety, and that'll go into the end zone that time. That's what should have happened last time. Yes. <laughs> I'm guessing Columbia's coach said, uh, Coach Ward said, uh, don't field this one. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> last time resulted in the safety, and, you know, this time three points, and. Just everything so that was just really continued. a five point swing there. Yes, it was. Yep. So that'll be 20 at the 20 yard line where Columbia will have it. Let's see if they can, what they can do here. I mean, the conditions would not really allow you to put the ball in the air, although they will have the wind in about five and a half minutes. Yeah, I think they're also going to have to. But yeah. again, you're talking about a team that that's just not who they are. Right. And I think that's struggling when you. That really you're having to do that. But again, you wanted to force them into throwing the ball. Calamas will hand off. 
and good tackle made in open field by A.J. Schaefer. I think the quickness on this, you know, I talk about the guards pulling. You'll see some very good, you know, blocking on this. But, you know, at the same time, they just cannot. The, the, it's slowing them down uh, so much, the weather conditions. Schaefer, we talked about him last week and this week. Just a, a great defensive player, great offensive player. But defense is particularly his forte. Yeah, you, you know, you you look at his size, and I sometimes don't don't mention that, but that's a big deal for him at six. Or excuse me, he's six foot, two thirty, two thirty. So now trips on the near side here, one wide out on the far side, empty backfield. They're going to hand it off, and there's wow. nothing doing for Sir Rigliano as he is tackled. And I'll tell you what, A.J. Schaefer has 94 tackles on the season coming into this game and six tackles for loss, which that last one was, and three sacks. So yeah, I'm wondering if he had 90-some tackles in this game. <laughs> He's been all over the place. We have called his name quite yes, a lot. Yes, we have. And that makes it uh, third and 15 now for Columbia. Raiders looking to get something going here. Looking to throw down the field. Quick throw. Catch is made. Tackle immediately made. And that was a pickup of about five. So that'll make it fourth and ten. And so that'll mean that Columbia is going to punt again. They're going to say Into the wind up. again. Into the wind, yep. I'll tell you what. I'd almost go. I know. Yeah. Man, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I, that's the other thing, too, I think, you know, Columbus Grove, I mean, they have, I mean, they do this, how do you do this, but they've really taken advantage of, you know, playing field position or right. playing the wind. I mean, it's. See if they go after us. They have been known to do that. Nope. It's a weird punt. Brazo pick it up at the 40 to the 35. He'll cross the 30, go to the sideline to the 20. And he will get tackled at the 15. So Barraza is good field position, you know, and makes it something out of nothing, you know. He had to pick that one up. It died in front of him 10 yards. You know, if you're Columbia at Coach Hale, you're going to look back on this game and just say, how did this happen? We didn't get to play. You, right. you know what I'm saying? Well, they we never one got first down on, this, on the, the night. Correct. <laughs> I mean, it's just like field position. I mean, that punt, I mean, there was – it wasn't the punter's fault. There's nothing else he could do. Kept it low and kept it low. It bounced right to Barraza. So Grove will have it. I'd say it's pretty good field position. Absolutely. They're at the 14-yard line, so they're in the red zone to start your drive. Renner at quarterback. Barraza with him. He'll hand off to Hulker coming across the side. Hulker gets the corner to the 10-5. Touchdown, Grove! Wow, he just got to the corner, went around the side of that, and got it all the way in. That wow. is a Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. Wow. <laughs> I mean. You watch the blocking on this. Keep Oh, what a great block that time. And again, Schaefer, yep, A.J. One, Schaefer. Yep, yep. And then it was just Shep Hawker out running yeah. them. So let's see what they're going to do here. If they go for two, it would knock it into running clock situation. You know, Shep Hawker, 5'9", 155, you know, or, yeah, I think, one, yeah, 155. He looked a lot stronger on that. You know, give that stiff arm that time, got away from the defender. Grove is going to go for two here. That would push him into a running clock situation here. Let's see if they can get two. That'll be a pitch, reverse. And in getting stopped short get of the goal line. So that makes it 28 nothing, and we'll continue in a regular clock situation. I think if he would have kept that and kept on going outside, but he cut it in. He did cut it in. You're right. He I had a blocker he had, out there. Yes, he, had he did. He out there. Yep. Didn't see him. So that makes it uh, keeps it 28 to nothing here. Four score lead here. But the real number on the the uh, scoreboard right now is that 303 remaining here, right. third quarter. Well, I think too. You know, you're looking at Columbus Grove right now. Okay, you're kicking off. Let's hold them if you know if you're Columbus Grove. You're gonna say let's hold them and force them one more punt into the wind uh, before the fourth quarter. 
Absolutely, and you're right. There's uh, three minutes to do that. The kicks have been very deep uh, when they're with the wind, and they've been poor when they're not with the wind. And, you know, this is a, these are situations where, you know, with a 28-point lead, you say, well, you know, we'll take a timeout or two, you know, just to keep, you know, so keep they the have to punt into the wind. They have to hold them, but, you know, that way, you know, you got one more chance that, you know, with field position that you wouldn't have otherwise, and if that can get you into a running clock, hey, all the better, you shorten the game. Absolutely. So Grove is leading 28 to nothing. They're going to play the winner of Marion Local and Allen East if they continue to hold here. And you talked about that. If those two, if Marion Local and uh, Columbus Grove, again, you, you route the two schools and you look somewhere, somewhere in between, uh, there's no advantage for one school going 20 miles further than the other. But, you know, and you get you got next week, too, by the way, is Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. And that really narrows down. But, again, you don't have as many games, but that narrows down to – I held many games, Chris, over Thanksgiving vacation, and I'm lucky I'm still married. <laughs> <laughs> Sirigliano took that kick off there, and they got it out to the 22-yard line, but the running has been tough for him tonight. Yes, it has been. They've really done a good job. You know, we go back to those keys. You know, I said key number three was stop number three, stop number three, and stop number three, and they've really done a good job of that. And I think when I looked at uh, the keys to the game that we got sent by the coach, it, it was, was stop number three, stop number three, it was. stop number three. And there they are right on the, <laughs> right on the screen. But. Let's see. They'll hand off. So Grigliano will drive forward and run into a host of blockers. In there, I saw Kylan Mays again. And that is basically back to the original line of scrimmage is all he got. Yeah. And you know, too, you know, I talk about that. And that's one of the things I mentioned early on. There are two great coaches here. Yeah. That's interesting. I ran into my college roommate, Bill Albright, uh, in the football uh, high school football coaches hall of fame as an assistant for Columbia. And Jason Hale was his quarterback and at uh, Midview High School. So, you know, the thing about that is I love when a head coach formerly comes back and helps somebody like yep. Coach Hale. And I Absolutely. think that – and he's he's recognized as a great coach this himself. Joseph Rigliano on the side, and they will get him out of bounds. He'll pick up maybe about four. Got him out of bounds and stopped the clock. They did. <laughs> that's, that's wise. Yes, they gave him four and a half, five. They gave him exactly five. But he tried to string it out to that outside, and you know, trying to get trying to get that corner. He's had some luck at the corner. That one big run he had, about 15, 20 yards. Yes. With their one first down, he basically um, he basically got that side. So, well, you know, and that's the case too. That you know, again, Coach Schaefer right now. He's thinking we've got to get them to for, oh, force them to punt into the wind. And they're going to throw a quick throw. Catch is made. And Paul is out. Grove will pick it up. And they will run it down. And they will be tackled at the five-yard line. First and goal for Grove. Look at this. It popped out of his hands. Who made that fumble? That was that. Not, that was nine. Mitchell Ellerbrock that came in and hit that, and then picked up by number fourteen, uh, uh, Landon Schrader. Ellerbrock just made. First of all, what a great tackle in the open field. I mean that alone. Secondly, he forces that fumble by a good head on the ball tackle. And you know, interestingly enough, Jerry, I was watching the play clock, and it was at zero before that was snapped. Had they whistled that, that would not have changed. But they did not. It was a full That's second interesting. after the, after that. So, so Renner has it. Barraza with him. Schaefer in there as well. Barraza will drive forward in for the touchdown. Well, they didn't get the two-point conversion before, but now they've got it up above 30. Barraza has just been a beast tonight. I, I, you know, the thing is, I mean, as well as Columbus Grove is just, do, it really kind of dominated this game. Yep. I mean, really, we'll look at, when you look at the score, but I don't think we really have seen the real Columbia team. Yep. And, again, both teams have the weather conditions, so you can't say that, but that's how breaks are made sometimes. Grove has done a much better job of, of planning for the weather conditions. That touchdown, by the way, sponsored by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Right, and that's, uh, you know, Grove just has a much better, I, I don't know, overall attack offensively, I think. 
kick is up, and it is, whoa, we're going to signal. Yeah. They're off sides. We'll just decline that, right? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's talk real quick before we go to break about the, uh, the running clock rules. Uh, greater than a 30-point differential after the second quarter, which we have right now. And the clock only stops for four things. Right. There are four things there during a timeout. Any team takes end of a quarter, obviously, which we'll have coming up. Any scoring opportunity because of the amount of time it takes, you know, to, to change the uh, size, just change field. But uh, in any other unusual delay, that includes injuries, you know, whatever may happen. And that's at an official's discretion, right? That is correct. All right. So 35 nothing. Grove looking to kick the extra point here. And let's see if Grove can put this up and in, get it to 35, and it's blocked. Okay, so it will remain 34 to nothing. That was weird. Why did they kick it over? I, I, oh, they stopped it. I think they, they actually blew the play dead before. Yep, they yeah, did. Yeah. They did. So 34 to nothing, third quarter, minute 51 remaining in a running clock situation. Back after this on WSN. Back out on WSN, Columbus Grove just took a – 34 yard 34 nothing lead and we're in a running clock situation here and that was the impressive a tackle a fumble and then all the way to score kickoff will go back to Sigliano he has some space and he gets out of a tackle and then he's stopped in the ball the people are scrambling on the field for a ball I don't know if he fumbled or not no, this that was be the, actually number one Jacob Sanders returned that one. Yeah, and this will be the best field position from a kickoff that I think they've had. Absolutely. So Grove has played great defense against Columbia. Let's see now if Columbia will get something going here. They have the disadvantage now of uh, being in a running clock situation. Now in a minute and 20 when we get to the end of the quarter, they're going to switch fields and they'll have the win with them. So that yes. should change things a little bit. You know, and again, they just want to finish strong. I mean, I, you know, you're not telling your kids that we're done, but at the same time, they just want to, you know, finish as strong as they can. All right, so it is moving forward for Sigliano, who will pick up about three, four yards. So, again, the winner of this one will get the winner, Alan Easton, um, Marion Local. That game is going to be at Wapak. Oh, that's right. That's already set. Yep, they've already set Yeah, that's right. Yep. So, Wapak in the general vicinity of both. Yep. So, 36 seconds to go here. And they certainly don't have any urgency. No. Doesn't so make it second and uh, six. Calamaz is under center again with a the back. They'll hand off. And again, Sigliano will get the sideline, and he will get pushed out of bounds. And I'll tell you what, good blocking there on the left-hand side by the Columbia defense. Ethan Her Ethan offense. Meyer comes around here. Watch this block on the end. I think we'll see it. Bam, right there he does. Great block. So that'll make it first and ten, and I think that's their second first down of the game for Columbia. So we'll switch fields and go to the fourth quarter of play. Columbus Grove 34, Columbia nothing, right here on WOSN. Back out on WOSN, Chris Malinga, Jerry Snodgrass, first down for Columbia, and they have it. This will be a handoff, and going nowhere is Mario Sigliano. And uh, we talked to going into the halftime break, just two first downs for Columbia. Wow. Isn't yeah. that impressive? Well, you know, and... and Almost every series, you know, one of those downs has been, you know, broken up by a fumble. It's something that, you know, even if they recovered it themselves, it's just something that they uh, stubbed their toe on that put them in a bad spot, you know, third down and long. So it'll be second and long, second and 11. Let's see, Calamaz will have it in the shotgun. He'll throw this time, and it's attended for number five Vince Berardi unable to make the grab and you'll see AJ Schaefer coming in hard on that blitz on the right side and you know he had to get rid of uh, Calamaz had to get rid of it quick that'll bring it up third and ten Northwest Ohio basketball news kind of related uh, congratulations to former BGSU coach Jim Laranega 700 wins on the career 
That's impressive. Yes, it is. You're right. Former Northwest Ohio guy. He was the coach at BG when I was there. Cerulliano will try to go to the right side, and then he cuts back for some reason to the center. He had a little bit of running room on the right side and just not able to go, and that'll make it fourth down, and that'll be something they're going to have to keep going here, down 34 nothing. You know, you, you mentioned uh, Jim Laranaga on the basketball side of things, and shout out for uh, one of my former players, Lamont, Lamont Paris, uh, my point guard uh, uh, in the 90s, early 90s, is now the head basketball coach at uh, University of South Carolina in the SEC, and got a win, got his opening win, and uh, they're three or four games in now, got a couple wins, and look forward to seeing him play this year. All right, that'll make it third and about two, or about eight, I mean. Throw made to the right side, catch is made, intercepted. How oh in the goodness. world? It went off of Jacob Sanders' hands. Let's see if we can see this. It went to Jacob Sanders. I thought he had the catch, and he just took just it right took out it of his right hand. Oh, my goodness. I, I, literally, I don't know if I've ever seen a game where there have been so many things just unusual go against a team. That's right. It's like they're cursed. <laughs> that is unbelievable. So now Columbus Grove will have it at their own 44-yard line. Running clock makes it 9.38 as we've got a timeout on the field as they switch it. Now they'll wind the clock. And if you're... If you're Columbus Grove here, we're going to see a diet of Barraza, right? Yes, we are. We got Landon Best in at quarterback. Barraza and possibly a little bit of A.J. Schaefer. They'll bring Grant over Eversole now. Yeah, getting some guys playing time in a regional final, that's pretty good. That'll be a handoff to Eversole, and he's going nowhere. And that'll make it, I think he got basically the line of scrimmage. May have lost a half a yard now that I look at it. He has. He's lost a half a yard. You know, something, uh, too, that sometimes I don't mention enough of, and I guess my my career tells me this a lot of times. I'm so appreciative when I see players helping the other team up yep. and still, you know, congratulating somebody for a good block even, yep. you know. I've seen a lot of that out of both sides. And that's, a, that's just great leadership from their coaches. Sportsmanship, definitely a big key right now, and that's going to be offsides on Columbia. They were coming on the left side. I don't know if that was Michael Chapman, number 65, the defensive tackle that jumped or what. Makes it second and five. And sportsmanship, just a, a big, important thing. And uh, you, you know, it, it just, it's so important to set examples for fans. I, I just uh, Fans will follow. <laughs> they really do, and we need more of it. So Best is in at quarterback, and then your running back is Grant Eversole. This will be a handoff uh, and a fumble, and that was to Trevin Baxter, a 5'8", 140-pound freshman. Looks like Grove uh, will retain it. Just yeah. a bad exchange. Yeah, you know that that's the tough thing right now. I think we're going to see a little bit of this during the, you know, you're asking younger players to come in during less than ideal weather conditions. And, you know, I mean, yeah, you've got a big enough lead. You need to do it, and you should do it. But at the same time, it's really challenging, I think, for younger players. I'm pretty confident that these freshmen that are playing for Grove right now have never played football in this weather. And they're playing also <laughs> in a regional championship <laughs> game. The good thing is, I think, too, they have best in the game, and I think that's something that will kind of, you know, stabilize them. I think you'll see him carrying the ball a lot. Yep. Defensive, uh, or I mean, offensive line has changed as well. Best will have it. He'll roll, and he will just uh, head out of bounds and throw it. Yeah, I think they may get him for a. He's outside the tackle box, yeah. though, so I don't know if they would flag him there or not. Yeah, you're right. I don't know that Best was trying to actually throw that. Yeah, that's what I wondered. You know, he may have just been trying to string it to the outside. He was down anyhow. Yeah, I think, yeah, they, I think they marked him down. So that'll be third down, six fifty to go. Third and eight. Balls at the forty-seven. I'm surprised though. I mean, not that, not that I care. Well, I suppose the officials have the authority to stop the clock, but they are penalizing it. Though they must have called. That's interesting. Oh. I didn't see the flag coming at all. Again, he was out of the tackle box, so he was right on the sideline. Once they flush you out like that, I thought you were allowed to throw it away. Yep. <coughs> you got a quick kick? Yep. They are. 
It went straight up in the air. Straight up in the air. Up in the air. Uh, and it did, it's going to go back, and they're actually going to get it where the down marker was. I believe we have a net punt of <laughs> either zero or one. <laughs> Let's see if they move the down marker. It's a one yard. It was a one yard net punt. <laughs> Can sure hurt your punting average. <laughs> My goodness! Oh, it went straight in the air. <laughs> wow! So. They moved the, the thing, so I'm going to give it a one yard. I'm going to give that a one yard punt. Yes. 6.19 remaining here, first and 10. Ball's at the 37 yard line. This is the best field position that Columbia's had. Columbia, man in motion. They'll hand off. And it is a tackle, and I think that was. Number three, Sirigliano. And again, yep. you know, you can see on your TV screen that they're wearing black uniforms with green numbers and completely indistinguishable. We're yes. going basically by tendencies by the way the player looks. Yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> Even last week when we had yellow on white, I think it was, and that was tough. But, but that was hard to see on the field, but it was great to see it on was, TV. Yes. This is a big mess of black. So looking to throw, throw down the field. Uh-oh. And overthrown him. He was wide open. That was a six. You know, you would almost saw right at the end, he had him. I thought everything was good. It's almost like the wind caught that a little bit right at the end. That was a nice pass, nice play. Is that Sirigliano that was down there? That might have been Berardi. Nice play. And just like, he's got him. And then like all of a sudden, it just like went another yard or two. That was number nine? Yeah. Number nine. It was Ethan Meyer. Meyer. Yep. And Ethan Meyer didn't slow down at all. I mean, that's one of the things he did not do. Third and eight. Let's see what they do here. Sorellano is, oh, he just comes down hard. Oh. Yeah, yeah he's, he I, flipped and he came down really hard. Oh, he just flipped. Let's see that one again. Yeah, he's. Look at this. He has it. And Columbus Grove comes in. Tackle made at his legs. He flips upside down. Lands oh, yeah. on his neck. Yeah. basically good thing that he's walking off the field and he's actually back in so he didn't come out that's interesting fourth and nine and he's going to live another day quick throw catches mate on the sideline and he will be short of the first down marker that was gavin tollett for columbia so that'll be a turnover on downs Boy, just great open field yep. tackling there, too. Grove is The Grove defense has really risen to the occasion, Jerry. I, I, am, I am very impressed with the improvement from last week. And I say improvement. I mean, they just played a solid game all the way around. They last really year, have. Last week, they just seemed a little hesitant. You mm -hmm. know, I, I don't know what it was. I Feeling out the other team, I guess. I tell you what, though. <laughs> The Columbus Grove coaching staff give them a bunch of credit for they, knowing what the conditions are like and still having a game plan for it. Yes, and, and you know, that's one thing. I, I, I love, that's why I love small schools. These guys have chances to go yep. all over the place to coach, yep. and they stay in their communities. And I, I just love that. That'll be a pitch forward. Josh Gannon with the carry. When both of these coaches are done with their careers, you know, they can look back and say what a difference they made, not just for the number of athletes that they've served, but they've made better men. They've been, made better fathers. They made better community yep. members. And, man, there's nothing better in the coaching world. And small schools are just the greatest yes. as far as that goes. You know, we we do most of our work in the NWOL, and you look at people like, you know, Bill Inselman at Patrick Henry, yep. you know. Guy that's been there forever. This will be a quarterback keeper. There's nothing better than 15, 20 years after you're done or after they graduate, and that player addresses you still as coach. Yep, absolutely. I remember a former player I had that just retired from the NFL. And I remember, gosh, when he was 30-some and, you know, 
called me coach. I said, you know, you can call me Jerry now, you know, and his comment to me was, okay, coach. <laughs> yeah. Did that <laughs> particular just, pro were number seven? <laughs> yeah, it was. A good number seven. <laughs> but uh, that's just the respect, I think. That, yep. that's, that's why the profession is so good. So good. All right. Second and six. And that's... Uh, That'll be number one, Kyle yeah, Hopkins. He's yeah. going to come in at quarterback. Grove will punt it. We'll be at the two-minute mark, under under two minutes, minute and a half by the time they kick this. You know, you talk about, like, right now, some of these underclassmen getting playing time, and we're this far into the season like this, about 13 games, I guess, or 14 games. And I always remember that uh, Chip Otten or maybe John Reed before him, they were telling me that in all those years where they were playing in the state championship every year, by the time the kid was a senior, he had played a whole nother season. Yeah. You know, or a yep. couple seasons. Yep. Yeah, you know, with the number of games they've played. Yep. I guess a couple seasons. Five games a year they were playing in the playoffs. This is number 44, Josh Gannon, who will go forward and actually go backwards. So Columbia will take it over first and 10 inside Grove Territory. Out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. So all this digital technology stuff can watch it wherever you're at. Yes, you can. I'll tell you what, how that's changed the world. Yep. I guess you can attribute COVID, I think, you know, yep. caused so much of that. It accelerated it just yeah, a sure little bit. Did. Looking to throw down the sideline, wide open man, and just out through it, over through it just a little bit. Sanders was out there. You know, and you look at that too, and it's easy to say now, you know, because, you know, the game's out of, out of reach and everything, game's over in, in that respect. But there's been some good pass plays here, and they're just so close on that. Yep. That was the second one that just yes. hit the outstretched fingertips. So Grove is celebrating over there as... They will head to the regional championship game. Or, uh, excuse me, the regional, uh, the, the, what is this now, sectional? No. No, 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 this is the regional championship. Regional championship. They'll now go to the state semifinals. State, state semi, that's right. One of the final four. And they will uh, play, uh, looks like Marion Local is going to be the one. That's going to be Saturday at Wapak. You know, I, I've always talked to so many players and teams and, you know, the, the dream of practicing on Thanksgiving. Yep, you absolutely. Absolutely. Looking to throw down the field. Grove's coming in, throw out of bounds. And that is going to do it for this one. Columbus Grove will shut out Columbia, 34 to nothing. They will head to the state semifinal now next Saturday night against Marion Local. That game will be in Wapak, and Columbia's season ends at 13 and 1. So congratulations to both these teams. Columbus Grove uh, will go play against Marion Local. We're going to take a timeout. We'll quickly wrap things up here after this on WSN. Final score, Columbus Grove, the Bulldogs 34, the Columbia Raiders nothing here in uh, this regional final game. Columbus Grove is victorious. Chris Malenga, Jerry Snodgrass with you. And, Jerry, real quick, your final thoughts on this one. Just a dominant performance. Oh I mean, goodness. you know, again, we talked about the, the everything was established so early with the fumbles, uh, quick touchdowns, the, you know, everything. It just They established themselves right away, and just Columbia could never dig themselves out of the hole. And the thing about Columbia, like I said, I don't think we saw the real Columbia right, I team. I think you're right. And to credit Columbia, hey, this is what, their second, third, fourth, something like that year, at the, and, and this is the furthest they've gone, yep. and they're just continuing to build. And they've got a lot of young players, too. They do. They so they're, they're but, best running backs a junior. Yep, absolutely. But boy, if you're Columbus Grove, you know you got two losses on the year, and boy, you're playing for something a little bit bigger. They're now one of the final four. That's absolutely good. So, uh, you know, but a, a great game, a snowy great game, and Columbus Grove just dominated from whistle to whistle. Yes, they did, and you know, great senior leadership, I think, out of Columbus Grove, and I think they really. Uh, did a lot to bring those players, the younger players, along. All right, well, there's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewers-supported TV44 and WOSN by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com. Click Donate as we get to the holiday season. You're thinking about your end-of-year giving. Consider giving to uh, TV44 and WOSN. Yes, they do so much just not for high school students 
student athletes, but also for the communities. Over 100 schools they cover in their area, just just amazing. Yep, they had a niche there from the early 90s, I think, or maybe before that, and uh, it's just wonderful for, for communities and uh, for people to have them in their homes. Well, Jerry, I want to thank you once again. It's been a pleasure these last couple of weeks broadcasting with you, legend, and uh, appreciate it. No, not about that. Not about the legend part, but it's been wonderful, and it's been a wonderful opportunity, I think, to say good things and cover good things about high school athletes. It's been a pleasure to work with you and our camera and our, our crew, who you know pretty well, yeah. and they deserve a ton of credit for the elements that they've had Absolutely. to deal with. Absolutely. We'll, we'll thank our sponsors one more time before we thank our crew, Hawker Drywall. Visit them at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Uh, Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. And Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Want to thank, they're out there, Columbus Grove is out there jumping around on the field, and <laughs> they're excited about this one. So we want to thank uh, all of our crew and everybody bringing the game tonight. Uh, they include our director, Tony Malanga, our cameras, Beckett Stark and Krista Bruner. Uh, and for Clyde High School, Ryan Green said, uh, just a great time here. And uh, Jerry Snodgrass, again, uh, real fun uh, doing this game with you. Thank you, and a real a real tribute to, our, like I said, our camera, our crew, and also to Ryan and the people in Clyde. From all of us here at WSN, I'm Chris Malenga. Again, your final score, 34 to nothing, Columbus Grove. Have a good night, everybody.